you and your traveling companions are all sitting around eating and trying to make plans for what to do tomorrow. But the sound of chewing is just distracting you so much. It's driving you insane until finally you just snap at everybody. And they all look up and around at you, not understanding what the heck just happened. Hi there and welcome to Psychology at the Table. I'm Dr. Connell and today we're going to be talking about misophonia. Now this is an area of expertise by my friend and game designer, Elisa Teague. So welcome. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about what is misophonia? Well, as I understand it, I, I have it. I was diagnosed about 12 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. And I always knew that um, the so certain sounds really bothered me. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, it was getting worse and worse. And it actually was making me uh, very anxious, stress out to the point of even blacking out oh, wow. or getting uncontrollable rage. So misophonia is not really just, oh, I hate the sound of chewing or mm -hmm. I hate the sound of tapping. Um, it's really annoying. Yes, it's annoying to everybody. Right. But this is actually an uncontrollable psychological reaction that a lot of us have um, that is actually frightening, uh, where you just, you cannot control your actions. And um, it's just something that you have to deal with because there really is no treatment for it yet. Doctors still don't really know too much about it. They don't know if it's linked to an OCD or mm -hmm. if it's just linked to anxiety or what really triggers it. But they mm -hmm. do know that it's not a problem with the ears specifically. Mm -hmm. It's a problem with how your brain registers sound. sounds. Yeah. Well, and that's interesting. So in the psychology and biology of like the brain, like we know that there are certain sounds that basically penetrate into our psyche in a certain way. Um, for example, a, a baby's cry. Mm -hmm. It's actually at a frequency and a register that human ears cannot ignore. Right. Which is very adaptable and survivable. Well, of course. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so we want that. So it's sounding like is maybe one of the things that's happening is like that uh, ability for certain sound waves and certain frequencies to get in, gets in for uh, things that are not, um, I guess we would say like uh, helpful. Right. <laughs> and the thing that's it. so weird about it, unlike the baby crying, is that mm -hmm. it's different for different people. Yeah. Um, so some people just can't stand the sound of whistling and it enrages them. But I have no problem with listening to people whistle at all. Yeah. So it just, that's, I think that's why it's eluding so many people on, on mm -hmm. what to do about it. Yeah. And how well is it understood by doctors like and recognized or is it? I mean, well? I don't think very well. Mm -hmm. I, I was diagnosed while going through just my own therapy and I brought it up. And that's when I even learned the word because until then, I had no idea. And then I found out that it was linked to other triggers. So I have the same uncontrollable rage impulse when something is flickering in my peripheral vision. Hmm. So if, if a friend is shaking their knee mm -hmm. from their own type of anxiety right. or, or other disorder, um, that they need that to self-soothe, that's actually enraging me. And then I need to do something to self-soothe. Um, it's just really interesting. So if somebody's yeah. like jumping around in the background while I'm trying to have a conversation, it, it uh, yeah, yeah, I tense up there. Like, I don't know how to really explain it, except that I have had, um, and then it's going to make me sound horrible, but I've had raging like murderous thoughts especially with the sound yeah um, that I never would normally have interesting and so if you're running a game what might be some signs that somebody at your table is struggling with this I can usually tell um, when somebody has a problem when I'm well because I'm very sensitive to the sounds myself right so if somebody's eating at the table and I see that somebody is visibly squirming in their mm -hmm. seat or trying to move away from them or actually like covering their ears, I'm like, okay, this person suffers from misophonia for sure. Yeah. Um, I, my kids haven't been officially diagnosed. This is pretty much moved into a self-diagnosis mm -hmm. type of disorder because there's yeah. not much that they can do. Um, but I'm pretty sure my kids have the same issue that I do. And I don't know if that means it's hereditary or if maybe they, it's a learned um, yeah. response because they've seen me dealing with it mm -hmm. my whole life. Um, but I can usually see that it's happening and then politely ask that we put away food at the table mm -hmm. or I'll call for a bio break 
Mm -hmm. And then it, it doesn't embarrass the player at the table and everybody can get up and do their own thing. And usually I give in my spiel when I'm, if, especially if I'm DMing a group of strangers, mm -hmm. like at a convention or something like that, I will um, give a spiel at the beginning that if anybody needs to call for a personal break at any point in time, even if it's in the middle of combat, if it's an emergency, that they can just, you know, signal me and if anybody feels uncomfortable for any reason, which... There are other things off topic that, you right, know, right. people can signal for. Um, that way they don't have to feel like they're put on the spot mm -hmm. um, and they can get up and leave. Because that's the way that I have to deal with it. At my family dinner table, I will just get up and, and walk out, excuse myself and walk out of the room and kind of just do breathing exercises until I can calm down because I can feel my blood pressure rising um, and I can feel like shaky. It's it's very strange to explain. I don't yeah. know. Well, but it sounds like a very adaptive thing that you've learned is like you've started to recognize that for whatever reason, these different sounds and things like really get under your skin and, mm -hmm. you know, and then so rather than trying to make everybody stop chewing or stop doing the thing of recognizing like this is something in me, I need to go take care of it in five minutes and then right. I can come back into the situation. Exactly. Because I know my my brain knows it's irrational. Mm hmm Right. I know that I don't want to murder my husband. Right. right. I want to make that very clear, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes I just can't control it. And and I start to feel myself um, reacting even in conversation mm -hmm. with like snappy answers. And I, you know, and things that I normally wouldn't say, like I'm on edge and I'm like, OK, this is not right. And so I've learned over the years of dealing with this, how, how to self-soothe in that way and like get up and, and fix the problem for myself. Now with like my, my kids, right. they'll give me looks, right? Mm -hmm. If they, if something, cause they don't want to be rude. Mm -hmm. So if we're in mixed company, you know, or, or at a restaurant or something like that, they'll, you know, widen their eyes like this and look at me. And I know that's the signal. That's, yeah. that's their signal, you know, and I, you know, have explained to them privately. These are sounds that people cannot control. Mm -hmm. Sure, if there's a rude person at the table chewing with their mouth open, it's a little bit different. They right. possibly could control it. But if somebody's being polite and it's just something that you hear, mm -hmm. um, it's up to them to, to figure it out, stand up, take themselves away from the situation, calm down. Like you would in any situation that angers you. Right. Um, instead of, you know, throwing fists. Yes. Or something <laughs> like that. Um, but another thing that we do at the table when I know that there's somebody with a problem, and mm -hmm. I also for myself, if I know that there is a loud person at the table yeah. that isn't aware of my problem, is I will play themed music, mm -hmm. which helps, you know, drown out a little bit of that um, and things like that. But yeah. usually regular bio breaks is really the only thing I can do. Yeah. Well, that's what, kind of what I was thinking is like maybe just a scheduled break, like every hour we take five minutes or something. Right. So that way people have a break. Right. And then they can eat during that time, mm -hmm. which is better anyway, because then your character sheets stay clean. Yes. Yeah. You don't get crumbs <laughs> and coffee stains all over. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, do you know if like any other resources or things if people are wanting to learn more about this? There's a ton. I mean, I'm going to say the internet, right? There's yeah. a ton of like really bad information on the internet also. Yes. Yeah. Um, but there are some good resources there too. I always go to all of like the actual medical sites. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, you know, I see memes and things go around about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Or I see people coming in like, oh, yeah, I hate that. I hate that. And then people will make their own personal commentary about what they think it is. And a lot of it is is misconceptions on what misophonia really is. So I would go to the WebMDs of the world mm -hmm. and and research it there. Or if you are seeing a therapist, if you think that this sounds like you, um, to talk to them. Because yeah. there was a lot of like CBT mm -hmm. um, therapy that was very helpful for me to learn how to recognize the response, mm -hmm. understand how to change that response. Yeah. Um, and I think a therapist is, is the one that will help you figure out some meditative, um, techniques to help you, um, because for everybody it's different and that's the yeah. problem. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, the thing you said there that's so important is like just learning what to do to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, cause again, like it sounds people can't control or, you know, just stuff in the environment. And so learning how to manage your own stuff is so important. Absolutely.
Yeah, that's great. And we'll put some links down in the doobly-doo of other resources for you to look this up. But thank you so much for coming on. Oh, you're welcome. Awesome. It was great to talk to you. Great talking to you. Awesome. Well, guys, I hope this was helpful. And if you have questions, please list them below. And as always, let's make space at the table for everyone.